Desert Island Band? Easy. No question. Celine Dion. I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm rambling. Uh, for real, though, my Desert Island Band? Def Leppard. <laughs> Hello, kiddies. It's me, your old pal, the Crypt Keeper. And you're watching Rotten Roger DeMarco. Three Bs. Blood, boobs, and beasts. Roger, you beast. You're a bloody boob. <laughs> Hello, internet fans. It's your old pal Rotten Roger DeMarco here from 3bproductionco.com. This week, we're going to be talking about Jeremy Solner's 2015 film, The Green Room. Okay, so here is the plot breakdown. The Ain't Rights are a small traveling punk band. They are scrounging money, bouncing from city to city, venue to venue, trying to earn enough scratch just to keep their tour going. They get sort of a bad lead on a show where they don't necessarily make their money back and the promoter decides to make it up to them by sending them to a Nazi bar, Nazi hangout venue. They go perform and when they are leaving, they stumble across a murder that had just happened and they barricade themselves inside the green room fighting off legions of Nazis led by Captain Picard himself, Patrick Stewart, and it's awesome. But before we get into my overall thoughts of the film and all that stuff, first, let's take a look at Ryan Rogers Splatter Facts. We have 14 dead bodies. We have zero titties. I don't, I don't really know where they would fit, but would have been nice one or two nipples. We have Jiu-Jitsu hostage holding, we have arm mutilation, we have arm breaking, and we have a paintball pep talk. The methods of death include but are not limited to knife in the dome, box cutter gutting, dogged, stabbed and bled out, shotgunned, macheted, throat slash, gunshot, and heroin overdose. Yep, okay, so now on to my overall thoughts of this film. If you're new to the channel, then you might not know the type of films that I gravitate toward. I'm very much into like home invasion style films or films that just pit us against them, like a barricaded group of survivors versus a threat. I really like that style of filmmaking and this movie is near perfect with its execution. This could be because it's better than your average horror film, it could be classified as a psychological thriller, which is what they like to do when they don't want to give horror credit. But this, to me, is a horror film in every sense of the word. You have a group of supposedly in control, supposedly tough, those type of people do not take shit from anyone. And you would expect a group of punk rockers, they seem tough, they're violent, they're wild that they would be able to handle themselves in any situation and this movie pits them up against people who don't give a fuck about their egos who don't give a fuck about their musical choices who are real badasses and it's an intense standoff style film where Anton Yelkin probably gives the best performance of his young life. When you see him in this movie, it's a shame that we can't have more films with Anton Yelkin. He sort of steals the show in this movie. He was destined for great things. And when you see the way that he handles himself in this movie and the range of emotion that he has, it's incredible. And I don't want to spend a whole bunch of time gushing about Anton Yelkin, but you can't talk about this movie without talking about his performance. Everybody in the film is good, but he is on another level. Maybe that's just the writing and that's the character that he was cast to play, but he gets some really good moments to shine and to lead the cast. Some of the things that I really like about this movie, as far as behind the scenes goes, I like the fact that the director got the cast together and had them learn how to play the instruments so that they could form this chemistry as a band. And when you watch the movie, you can tell that this group of people have been together and have been through some shit. So the band is called The Ain't Rights, and that consists of 
four people. You have Tiger, you have Reese, you have Pat, and you have Sam. They hold up in this green room with this girl, Amber, who was a witness to the murder. I don't want to spoil too much, but they're stuck in this room and they have to figure out if the people outside of the room have their best interests at hand. You get this sort of stalemate standoff where neither side is willing to budge and it sort of comes to a head and things get very violent. But I think that this movie does a great job of capturing that punk atmosphere and that punk attitude. Not that movies make Nazis fun to watch, but this movie makes them intimidating and makes them terrifying. This movie makes you afraid to go out the window or to go out the door. And it has this overwhelming sense of nothing is going to be okay. When you watch this movie, you get this vibe of as long as we have a door between us and them, we're safe, but it's not okay. Once that door is open, all bets are off, every man for themselves, it threatens you a lot with that, the fact that that door is going to open. And it builds on that tension of knowing that outside, they're planning, they're plotting, they're scheming. And that's another great thing about the pacing of this film and the way it's put together is that the performances in this film and the pace of this film give me anxiety when I watch this movie. And I say that in like the best way possible. This movie achieves the tension that it promises. When you watch this movie for the first time or you watch this movie for the 10th time, it still has that feel. Put this movie on and you just feel grimy. You feel like trouble is brewing. You feel sweaty, you feel clammy, you feel boxed in and it's exciting. It's a very hard feeling for me to put into words when I watch this movie. And I wish that more movies could achieve that vibe. Jeremy Solner, who is famous for films like Blue Ruin, he can take something extremely violent and make it beautiful, but also take something super mundane and make it seem intense. Again, this is definitely one of my favorite styles of horror film. The hold the fort, us versus them, basically one centralized location. It seems like a very cheap way to make a movie, and I don't mean cheap in the bad sense, a very inexpensive way to make a film. There's something so claustrophobic about that. It makes the whole world seem like that one place. There is no escape. There is no happy ending. There is no everything is going to be just fine. When you get to the end of this movie, you are left with the same dread from when you started the movie. You're like, wow, that was a ride. That was fun. But you're also like, man, that sucked. But not in the sense that the film sucked. It takes you on an emotional roller coaster. If you haven't seen The Green Room, I suggest that you seek this movie out, check it out. If you have seen this movie and you have some friends who haven't seen it, take it off the shelf or whatever and introduce it to your friends and have a good time with it. Because this is one of those movies that sucks you in. You're not getting up to go to the bathroom. You're not getting drinks. You're going to go for the ride. In my personal opinion, it is popcorn as fuck. That is the type of movie it is, but it has a very specific feel to it. It is fun. It is a blast, but it is so raw in the way that it portrays violence and so unforgiving. Most of the time when you have a character who is perceived as tough, they spend a lot of time talking, showing how tough they are. You almost expect them to kind of have a little bit of a showing when it comes time to defend themselves or go out on their shield, as I like to say. And in this movie, you spend a lot of time hearing how tough some of these certain characters think they are. And then when push comes to shove, they're gone, toast, dead. It captures a very realistic view of violence. This movie calls bullshit on all the macho bravado. And I love that about this movie. So if I have swayed you to check out this film again, or for the first time, click the link in the description and order a copy of The Green Room today. But uh, I suppose I should probably get going because after all, there's a lot of movies out there somebody's got to watch them so why not me right i just want to say real quick before i 
take off to watch new movies. Um, if you guys are enjoying the content that I'm creating and you're supporting what we're doing here, make sure to take a look at our Teespring store and check out some of the merch that we have available. We have stickers, we have shirts, we have coffee mugs, all types of fun things for you to wear or you know stick on your notebook or whatever, any way that you can show support for the 3B Production Co. crew, uh, show your love for popcorn as fuck cinema, and you know help us keep the lights on here at home. Uh, again, thank you so much for watching what we do, and I hope I made you laugh a couple of times. Until next week, I, uh, I'll see you later. See, I already used my good line. I already said uh, there's a lot of movies out there. Somebody's got to watch them, so why not me? So I already left, but now I'm back, and I'm telling you to check out the Teespring. Either way, thank you guys so much. See ya.